Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Look, look who we have here. I cannot wait for you to hear the strong gentleman who's been all over the world and has gained so much. Mr. Chris Donaldson. Man, Chris Donaldson has gone through the journey of life and he simply wants all of you to understand how much more you'll gain when you do your personal, personal connections in your body and you do your personal meditation and see about which steps you're supposed to go to and you'll see how you'll gain so much more from all these journeys. So man, Chris, how you feeling, Miss Chris Donaldson? Yeah. You're engaged, You're not putting me under any pressure to change everybody, everybody's lives, are you? No, I thought I was saying personal connection, right? They have to do the personal <laughs> yeah, thing. Because you're doing yours, right? Sure. Exactly. <laughs> I do my personal walk. That's why I, I, I just get all excited. And hmm, when you have that personal meditation, it just keeps me on fire every moment. So. <laughs> but Chris. But you want to talk about your journey. Didn't you have lots of different journeys that you gained so much from? Yeah, I mean, the first one, I suppose, the one I've written a book about, uh, was about 21. I was decided to ride my motorbike from, from Ireland to Australia. Clear. You said all uh, from Australia, but you, I didn't hear the exact first country. You said where? From our, Ireland, from Belfast in Northern Ireland. Oh, okay. Ireland. I've got a funny accent. Oh, okay. Well, I know you're from a different, so please speak up a little bit. I want to hear clearly each country you talk about. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, when I was about, I grew up in Belfast, Northern Ireland, which was in the 70s, not a great place to be. There was a bit of a civil war going on. And people were shooting each other and bombs going off. Ooh. So, like a lot of people my age, I decided I wanted to get out of, out of town, get out of Dodge. And uh, I decided I wanted to go to Australia. And for various reasons, I decided to take a motorbike because I wanted to see a bit of the world as well. So I think in 1970, October 79, I left, got as far as London, I was getting my visas and so on. And then the Ayatollah Khomeini took over the American embassy in Tehran. You see in your history books. Um, so that cut off the road east. And it, it was uh, autumn in Europe, so I decided to go south. And I rode down through uh, Europe, through the Middle East, across Africa, down through Sahara, and down to Cape Town in South Africa. Um, that was in the middle of apartheid era, so I got out of there, got a job on a sailing yacht back to Europe, and the sponsors of the race that we were in shipped my bike to LA. Mm -hmm. So I uh, started off again from there, went up to Canada, across Canada, and then worked in the States a bit. And uh, ended up in Buenos Aires and, and in Argentina. So uh, hence the name of the title of my book, Going the Wrong Way. I left to go to Australia and ended, ended up in Argentina a year and a half later. Oh, yeah. okay. So you've been going all over these different spots and everything. I mean, what have you gained from like England or Ireland? Like, What have you learned? Have you learned some things from those spots? Well, I think it's more about learning from the experiences you go through, no matter where the spots are, as you say, where your destination is, because very often the destination, well, when a normal day, normal life, when you go traveling or you get into your car or whatever, you've got a destination you're going to, you're going to work, you're going to see somebody, visit somebody, uh, whatever. Whereas if you're traveling the way I was traveling, um, you do have a destination in mind, whether you go to Australia, but it's very much way out there. You're really traveling for the day, for today, learning what you can about what's happening today. And uh, it was a lesson in mindfulness because so many people go through life always worrying about tomorrow, what's tomorrow going to bring, and uh, being depressed about what yesterday brought. But they should be worrying about, or not worrying, but they should be living by today and enjoying themselves because the journey of life is, the, you know, we're all going the same way. The destination's all the same. I really so. love that. It's how we make the journey that, that's important, you know? Hello. That's life. Because every little step I take, I just have joy. Joyful, joyful, Lord. We I don't have to sing as well, do I? Amazing. When we just free, free your mind, the rest will follow. It's just amazing when you just keep your mind free. And it's just like, oh, okay, no biggie.
Well, that's about the size. If you can free your mind, all you have to do all day is ride a motorbike. You know, so it simplifies everything down from chaotic lifestyle to just riding a boat, motorbike and staying alive. Uh, some of these countries got pretty drastic road conditions and uh, style of driving is pretty bad too. So, um, yeah, I mean, that journey was made when I was 21. I got back home when I started writing a book, uh, but then being 22, I sort of gave up and got into normal life living and getting married, having children, going to work every day and so on. And three or four years ago, I decided I should really publish this book, so I got it finished, which was quite a um, quite a, a moment in itself or two because I was able to read uh, my journals and my diaries that I'd written when I was 21, 40, 40 odd years ago and uh, put on my older hat sort of uh, brains to see what I did right and what I did wrong and um, it was quite quite uplifting to be able to to get what I could out of the story again and uh, one of my friends whenever he read the book he said but you never actually got this tree why not have another go so I still had the same motorbike I'd saved it, kept it all that time it was 40 years so though I'm going to Go to Australia, I may as well do it on my same motorbike. So we left uh, a couple of years ago, just after COVID. And last year it took me about two years to get there, but I finally made it to Australia after well, after 43 years, I guess. So um, my story is now about um, not so much a coming of age story, but more of a coming of old age story because I'm now knocking on retirement storm 66 so i'm trying to wind down and work out what um what, what we're here for what to do with my life now that, you know, lots of people view retirement as to as having enough money to retire but the other side of it is what are you actually going to do when you retire because so many people i know have retired and they're really just sitting around cutting the grass going playing golf twice a week and oh so i thought well there must be more to life than that why would we work 40 hours a week for 40 years just to sit around and watch a grass grow, you know? Ooh, okay. Well, come on. Age ain't nothing but a number. You know you don't look like that at all. And now you got all the benefits because of you. This one, this senior mess thing, but you get to go and play golf with all the people. I see everybody raving about how they're having so much fun with that golf. <laughs> you enjoy yourself more. Well, yeah, there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with golf, but, um, you know, so the pressure what I wanted to do was show that we could do the same things that we do in our 20s, we did in our 20s, albeit a little bit slower and a few more creaks and groans and stuff like that. Mm. But uh, so it was nice taking the same bike on the same trip that I tried to do 40 years ago and succeeded and actually got to Australia on the bike last year. Oh. So, uh, so next stop, probably Los Angeles. I want to continue taking it around the world. Because the funny thing about a journey, once one journey finishes, you really will. The next, the only thing you can do is plan your next journey. Hello. <laughs> okay. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. So you clearly have all the steps down. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm not going to mess up. Let me make sure I go this route. You're doing a great yeah. job. I mean, practice yeah. literally, because I clearly have been learning all my practice. And remember, I tell all the folks I use my BMW bike, metro, and walking, keeping me toned. And I see, I just keep getting encouraged when I see more people all over the world like you using your bike. I was so happily shocked when I was meeting the folks in Asia, how they use that bike so strong out there. And no wonder all of them are thin and skinny. And you happily taking your bike all over Ireland, all over the different spots. I'm like, say, that bike is essential. That's why I'm happily going to use my bike for the rest of my life. Because mm -mm, I'm never going to get too old. Let me see how I'm going to keep my youthfulness and just stay wonderful. Well, that's what's all right because if you don't keep your body fit if you don't keep your mind fit as well you just degenerate if you don't use it you lose it you know <laughs> and people work out with fitness but it's the same with your brain if you don't use if you do retire i think especially it's a problem for men because traditionally they've been out working all day and using their brains and their bodies whatever but they retire within six months you know they're going from maybe running a company or running a uh, business to doing nothing but 
what your grass grow was, they say, on your brain. I think it just shrivels after a while. You can't cope with anything then. Yeah, that... So I think it's important. And certainly riding a motorbike certainly keeps your brain active because it doesn't take you long to realize that most of the other road users are trying to kill you some way or the other. So you well... to keep your brain active to stay alive. Mentality, I see that one big time. Everything's all about the mentality. What you accept in your mind is what actually will be happening. And what you speak out loud is one though. That's the one because if you accept it and speak it out loud, that's why mm -mm, I'm just all energizing daily and just having so much fun. Because hey, I just speak out how joyful I am and how much it is so simple not to figure things out when you just free your mind. The rest will follow. All the other things were trying to block me off. Like, mm -hmm, you still don't have this. You still, you still don't have. It's like, hello, don't. Mm -mm. I've learned. Yeah. Quit and ignore what other folks can't see at this moment. But when they see that, oh, it worked for her. So all kind of things have been working for me as I just relax and do not <laughs> relax, relate, and release. <laughs> yeah, so it's a matter of getting your health. Give you tough time. You get so busy doing your normal life sometimes till you kind of afford the time to think about what you're going to do tomorrow because you're so busy trying to keep on top of things today, you know. So it's a matter of being determined, being self-motivated to keep going in the right direction, I guess. Hello. Yeah. I love staying motivated. I like when you said that, I'll be hello. <laughs> it's taking the wonderful steps for each person is just inspiration. It just keeps us inspired all the time. <laughs> I was never like you walking anywhere. I just I don't want to take the motorbike or the bicycle, as you say. Yeah, That's bike, a, metro, and walking. So walking keeps me all toned and tight. So, eh? <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, it's been a it's been a fun, fun trip finally getting to Australia. Um, one of the things you know, I didn't have time to take three months off or six months off to disappear my wife and kids and business. So what I did was, you, you look at a problem and decide how to what's the easiest way to get around it. So I split the journey into sort of six sections, drive, ride the bike for two weeks, then we'd park it up somewhere and come back two months later and continue on. So mm -hmm. it's a good way of learning about problems, any problems you have, you can get over them all right. So you just need to think about it, work it out. Okay. Think about the learning, <laughs> all the different rides. You've had so many rides. I love it. Because riding is awesome because I just think about theme parks when I think about the rides, or of course, yeah, all the rest of us normal moves and everything. <laughs> yeah. I just like what you were saying about your wife and everything must be relaxing right now. But you were saying how what is it you had decided from um some of the risks that you took? I mean, what some of the learning? What did you learn tremendously strongly from all of these journeys? What have you learned tremendously? Well, I've been lucky enough with timing. I was in Israel a couple of years ago and everything was fairly peaceful then, but it's gone crazy. Uh Iran was one of the nicest countries I ever went through. The people are so friendly, but now oh, they're right. getting caught up in the war as well. Um Pakistan, these countries have all got their issues. Um, once you leave, sort of, one well, of the nice things about traveling on your own is you've only got yourself to worry about, but also yourself to get you out of trouble if you get into trouble. So it does, you, oh, you know, you're taking certain risks. You have to sort of weigh up the, the risks that you're looking at the next country and decide is it worthwhile or is it not a route that's safer or whatever. But as I say, well, through luck or whatever else, I've been managed to keep the wheels on the road and keep turning, you know? Hey, as long as we keep the wheels in the safe spot and know how we going to grab our wheels all the time. Oh, and I had to learn my lesson the hard way because mm, as I'm the competitive girl, I'm the short girl in the family, and everybody's playing, and we do sports and games all the time. But long and short, it's just that learning I was always trying to ride my bike all the time and prove I can do it. Let me try to do these 20 miles. Oh, and that is so much work. And no wonder all the people who ride bikes on a regular basis, 
have the hybrid or electric, I don't know, it's both. It's not just a, um, a straight regular bike, but it's got the electric angle to it. So they can take you back if they need one. So that's why I had to learn. Hold on, we gotta bust that move. <laughs> bust that move as well. You take that move. Let's talk move. Well, do you operate with a uh, electric bike and a regular bike? I mean, is that one bike with you? No, it's just a one bike. Uh, this one bike, Monaco Zeno Mod, which is regular. Forty, um, what we forty-seven grew up years with. old now. Uh, so yeah, it's. Um, I prefer electric or prefer a motor over electric. Oh, oh, you prefer motor over electric? Uh, or instead of electric, I'm not really that keen on electric cars because. I don't think there's uh, ecologically friendly as people make out. By the time you build the battery and every, you got to recharge it every every day, with whatever, obviously. But uh, I think there's a lot of chemicals and a lot of things used with the electric cars that people haven't taken into account yet. Okay, Maybe we're going recharge. Oh, so you maybe have we're going to do them. the regular where you don't have to charge anything. Is a a a, a good what general one that we're just using your body the whole time. Yeah, the one of the bikes is it's got an eight hundred and fifty cc engine in it, petrol engine, or gas engine as you would call it. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Well, different. Okay. So people can just choose which one is the best one for them. And on that one. Yeah, so we we'll got back. As I say, I started writing my book, but I didn't finish it until forty years later. Um. And it's been a bestseller on Amazon a few quite a few times. It's getting some great reviews. It's got fourteen hundred five star reviews already. Um, I think the average is about fifty, so it's it's well up there in the rankings. And again, some great messages back from people who are feeling the emotion in it, and also bursting out laughing in the middle of the school, in the middle of the bus, or something like that. You know, there's some funny bits in it as well. It's a sort of coming of age story, I guess. You're coming of. Uh, Changing from boy to man to working out that you look at yourself to look after, and uh, nobody else is going to be you over know, your kid. When you're young, you've got your school, you've got the teachers, your parents looking after you. There's, there's always somebody keeping an eye on you, and especially in the Western world, you've got hospitals, you've got insurance, you've got things like that. Whereas if you're on your own in the middle of the third world somewhere, you've only got yourself to look after you, and if anything goes wrong, What are you going to do, you know? Well, it's a learning experience. That's why it's life. You just got to see what, okay, this has worked for me. So I like this angle. Let me let this angle. I just learned that you got to be open, enjoy those angles until somebody else shows you a different angle. And it's like, oh, maybe I should bust that one. Maybe that would help me. Because it's like, stop trying to just be stuck on one. Because <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I had to learn that way. It's like, mm -hmm. when you free your mind, the rest will follow. So many, so many things that will happen wonderfully. When you see that, oh, I don't have to just be like this for the rest of my life. I can just mm -hmm, open up another one like you were just bringing up. Why are you always trying to do electric? Why can't you see how mm -hmm, you can bust gas for a moment? And then we can just do this other one where I just bust the regular, where I just use my body, all, especially when it's a sh shorter one, where it's not 20 miles or something. I'll definitely use a regular bike that we all grew up with and got trained with. So I love that. Yeah, I mean, everybody around the world loves motorbikes, really. If you don't have a motorbike, you want to have one, or if you, you knew somebody used to have one, they are a great expression of freedom as well, that you're sitting in the open air and deciding what to do, where to go. Okay, But uh, the people you meet, is, I think one of the biggest, uh, not surprises, I suppose, really, but the, it's nice to learn that wherever you go, people are friendly and they'll usually look after you and help you in your way, you know. Yeah, it's the same places like Pakistan and Iran, um, South Africa, or wherever people are always out to look after to give you a hand. It's uh, it's not the people that aren't friendly; it's the governments that aren't friendly with each other. But you know, people you meet in the street are really much more easy to get on with than you would imagine.
I mean, it's my passion that we can just get the whole country first over here in USA. But uh, I love it if we can just quit all them wars and just have all the countries that are so friendly and we can just all be positive. But, oh, look at that. It's not hard. Everybody's loving people. We're all loving. We just got to set the example. That's why I'm my passion. Can you give me a five right here? High five me. High five me. <laughs> we I mean, you know, it's, a, it's a politician's in it. I'm going to try to high five, get five people to high five. There you go. Let's just shine high off. Five. Okay. We're positive people. Okay. Our thumbs up if it's normal. Yeah. Let's just make it normal that we're positive. And okay, that's a standard. Okay. We've got a hospitality and it's no big deal. We just shine off that we're loving, positive people. Yeah. Examples speak louder than words. So I love, or actions speak louder than words. But examples critical to see it because I'm my auntie now. And I see how essential it is for my nieces to see all of those things. Mm -hmm. But that's awesome. And I see how you're talking about, mm -hmm. you gave the official number. But mm -hmm. obviously, you don't believe you're that big old 66. You must be only 44 or 30, 50, something. Who knows what you proclaim? It's just that you go around and you don't let any of that stuff bother your mind. You just utilize everything. Yeah. I'm 66 now myself, so I'm what we call a pensioner. I don't know if you have the same thing to say, government uh, pension after, or after you're 66. So, but it's like, I can at least have proved that I can do the same stuff I did when I was 21. Uh, I can't go quite as far, quite as fast, but I get there in the end. Get all of it going on. It's right. Great experience you've had. Just the rest yeah. of us who have to. Get up there. No biggie. And actually writing a book afterwards was quite a um a thing for me because I'm never very academic at school, let's say. Um didn't have spell checker in those days for coming writing things down. But it was quite uh and um quite quite an effort for me to write but once I started it came out quite well. It came out easy enough. But to actually get a book uh, loaded up on Amazon and available anywhere in the world. I think it's quite oh, your, um, your book is an amazing thing for people. It clear, it, it's kind of breaking them. When you're speaking, I want you to say it clearly because I want to show them also what your book is. I'm a, we got to go over to that one. But speak your book. What's the exact title of your book? Yeah, the book's called Going the Wrong Way oh. by Chris Donaldson. It's an mm -hmm. Amazon. It's an ebook for audiobook on paperback and phone. Hardback, and mm -hmm. uh, certainly the states is one of the biggest markets because, as I say, it's not just a motorbike trip. It's not just a travel book. It's a bit of coming of age. It's a bit of a bit of everything. A bit of funny bits, a few funny bits, and a few uh, sad bits, serious bits. It's got everything in there. Oh, okay. Well, let me just go ahead and get everybody to see what you've been talking about. Let's just go over there. Can get those details for folks <laughs> to see how they connect with you easily or get your story easily. There we go. Oh my goodness. And we didn't put the title down. You said the title was Going the Wrong Way. Going the Wrong Way, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that so, was. Yeah. Well, that's the website. At least they know how to go to see a book on chrisdonaldson.world. Yeah, you can, if you go on my website, I can send you an author sign, a signed copy. Um, mm -hmm. But the trouble with America, you're, most, of your custom, most of your listeners would be in the States probably, wouldn't they? Oh, right, in the States. So, uh, so I, I, can't, I can't remember how much money. It's 15 pounds sterling. I don't know what that is. Probably about $25. Uh, oh, okay. postage. but there's some good color pictures a good story I'll say so myself oh okay well, you got your book and all that <laughs> that's good check on the website there's a bit more information on there too you know and links oh. to amazon more you think about amazon there obviously amazon, amazon seems to be taking over the world of everything everybody's shopping on amazon these days hello everybody Clothes online for everything. Well, that's good to yeah. see, but that motivates me to show. Because mm -hmm. I want everybody to see they can relate with me. 
<laughs> they can see my book right there. <laughs> that was right after I had my brain surgery. But Living Free, Overcoming Challenges and Uplifting is wanting to show you that the book is living free with epilepsy. Because I actually had epilepsy for most of my life, but viviendo libre con epilepsy también. Más gente. And they can just go over to breakingthecocoon.com and check out how they can relate with me in several angles as well. Breaking the Cocoon. But it's on Amazon also, but we'll see about yeah. that portion. Let's check out it a little. Maybe people who have epilepsy would be interested in it, I guess. Oh, that's what I love to say. Harriet Tubman, Julius Caesar, Prince, Flojo, De Socrates, Socrates all had epilepsy just like me. Trying to get those because those stories are in my book so they can see the true story and they can see my story. But it's just like when you can relate to somebody's true story, it's just like, oh, because Harriet Tubman didn't get hers until mm -hmm, the horrific thing happened from that other rape guy, <laughs> the other slave guy. So it's just like the slave owner had hit her up and um, actually raped her. So it's just like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Let's not let's not do any of those negative moves like that to um, to trigger and bring things on to people. So it's just like let's just be careful and be smooth and heck, get all of us accepted. Because I've been going through mine since I, I was young, very very young, and still all the people didn't all afraid. Like what is going on? Is she high? Is she crazy? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I had to explain. I had to wear my a medical ID bracelet. I don't even wear much more anymore. But yeah, no bigger, no bigger. <laughs> you can read the story and just shine off how I just have a great joy on me. <laughs> yeah, well, everybody has issues of some sort, Julie, as we get older, we get caught up. So it's interesting to see that. Clear, clear. <laughs> I'm sure you got your good story over there and going, going over how you've gone through that one here, but. Yeah, there's a few trials and tribulations. In fact, one of my nicest reviews I had was a guy got in touch with me. His son was in hospital with back surgery. And he really loved him reading his book out to him, just telling him all the hardships and things to get through, things to get over. He was able to give him inspiration to continue on with his operations, with his treatment for his back. So, yeah, reading is very powerful form of, of communication. You know, people get very lazy now. They're Want to watch a movie or um, see thing whatever on their screen, but really, old fashioned reading you got your own imagination comes loose, and <laughs> I think it's the best way. It's amazing how creative we all are. That's the thing about hearing and getting with another team where you see all the different details from folks. And that's why people are hearing from you. So they're seeing how, okay, they're gating from you this moment. So hmm, let's see what creative idea they get from. And then they can just contact you and see some more details. <laughs> yeah. Good one. So that's good. <laughs> Hey, just want us all to keep enjoying the life. And I'm so grateful to hear all of the great experiences you've had all over the world. Because it's great to hear you were saying Ireland, I believe I wrote down. Ireland was a very positive, you said a very positive and friendly country. So I'm looking forward to hmm, see about. It's like, pretty good now. In the 70s, it was always, there was always trouble between the unionists and the uh there were, there were people who wanted to join the south of Ireland and people who wanted to join the UK. So, so every country has its issues, mainly with politicians are the worst. Kind of yeah, there's things true. about, you know. Yeah, you know all about that at the minute. <laughs> He's got to keep it loving and see about how to even motivate the political folks to relax and take the deep breath and just get everybody to take the basic steps. But that's a whole different angle. I just want it all to shine the joy and more examples that they get down here in each country, more examples that they'll be uplifted, that motivated that, oh, okay. We can just uplift and shine off how encouragement is essential, is clearly essential. So I just want you to see how mm -hmm, you are encouraging more people than you realize. Because your journey has been experienced, is very been creative, and has been shining off that, oh, okay, I can gain that from these different countries. And hey, yeah. let me just see. Let's say everybody has a book in them, everybody has a, a story to tell, you know.
Hello. <laughs> it's just trying to make it interesting and uh, I think if you bring a bit of humor into these stories as well, it's easier for people to to uh, go along with, to read, to stay attention with it, to stay focused. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, that's the thing is like when they read and hear your story tremendously, they'll just remember, okay, this is what I need to do from this one. So that's why we just love, that's why I love reading the stories. It's just like, okay, this is what I can gain from these things. So they can see themselves. Yeah. This is what I gain from each of the different books. We're all different, so they'll see what they gain from all of them, from these stories. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I just like how you're sharing all of these and wonderful experiences that you've had in life and how you are clearly, clearly giving us the wonderful steps that you've gained. So look forward to more people mm -hmm, contacting you and understand so. how they can just clearly understand more once they get your true story. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll you know, don't have to listen to my accent if you buy the book. <laughs> no, do the audiobooks go very well, I have to say. Oh, that's a good. Oh, that's true. A lot of people do like to hear things. Driving and stuff. <laughs> well, hey, that's why I might book over there on Amazon. But let me see. Who will want to contact me? Oh, my wrong side. <laughs> Who will want to read my story while they're reading all those other famous folks' stories? I'll see if I'll be able to get into that angle as well. <laughs> see how many more folks will be able to connect and contact me. <laughs> Hope so. Well, enjoy. Right. Thank you. Nice to be here. It's great to see you. It's great to have you as well. So once you enjoy your week, remember the high-fiving move? <laughs> or you want a thumbs up one? <laughs> we just do the thumbs up if you don't want to touch, but we're high-fiving or fist bumping. And, okay. Fist bumping is making these days, isn't it? <laughs> okay. It's like all these angles. But who cares? I'm just enjoying and living one moment at a time. Sorry. You so just have a great one. You just enjoy your whole rest of your week, and I look forward to hearing. <laughs> How many you too, Alfred. Keep talking. Thanks. Thanks so much. Let's see. <laughs>